So there are several different protein databases. And as in the, um, for genes, they are both European and American version of it. However, most of it is now a single as Uniprot. So, and actually it's even partly paid by the Americans. So for protein sequences. But in general, so today, if you look at protein sequences, you go to Uniprot. And if you look at protein structures, you go to PDB. And there are several interfaces to PDB, both the European, Japanese, and, and American version. And then for classification protein families, there are many other databases that we will go through later in this database, the late in this course. So there are, for instance, for enzyme classification, you have the easy system, you have protein families, or in PFAM or Interpro, etc. So here I will just briefly mention some of these databases. So Uniport is the main sequence database. It uh, contains two different parts. Well, actually, several different parts. And the general two parts. One is called, called SwissPot, for this reason. And one is called Tremble. That's translated EMBL database. So, so the main difference is that SwissPot uh, contains manually annotated and reviewed entries. So it, all the data there, not only the sequence, but all other data is, should be of high quality. It's not always perfect, correct, but it is much more likely to be correct, because at least it has been somehow manually annotated. In contrast, Tremble, which contains many more sequences, is auto only automatically annotated, and it's not reviewed. So basically, you run some computer program that adds data to the protein automatically. Uh, and it also includes uh, reference data sets and proteome data sets, like this was UNIS refs, which is the clusters. So you have a UNIREF 100 that contains only, every cluster contains proteins that are different. So all identical sequences are contained in one cluster. And you have UNIREF 90 that contains, every cluster that contains all proteins are 90% or more identical, etc. Uh, and you have a unit part that you have a sequence archive that can keep track of all the early sequence etc. and so on. I will show you Uniprot entry right now by going to the Uniprot website. Here's the Uniprot.org. You see here, on the left, you have SwissProt contains today 553,231 sequences. The maintenance and Tremble contains 71 million 2,161 sequences. So you can, and you have UNREF, you have sequence clusters, so UNIPART, sequence archives, and you have protons. You have a protons, for instance, find a set of uh, complete protons. So you have 7,000 reference proteomes and 52,000 other proteomes. So if you click on reference proteomes, you see that most of the bacterial, but there are almost 1,847 eukaryotic ones and more than 1,000 virus ones. So we go back. And if we take the first entry here, which is what well, this was proton, we take it, we go with type our favorite, we take uh, MRC. So let's for instance type globin. Well, timed out, but now it works. So you see, if we get hemoglobin, some unit beta is number one here. If you get an entry here, it has a number, it's a human protein, it contains information about where it comes from, it has a gene name, it has information about binding sites. So you see, it being the iron here, the methyl binding, in position 93. There's a functional classification of the protein that tells you that it's heme binding, oxygen transport activity, it can tell some biological process that is it's important for hydrogen peroxide, nitric oxygen transport, etc. It might work soon. Uh, it contains some keywords, it has a it part of some password databases here, it has different names in hemoglobin beta, it clearly interfered into chains, it has 50 forms, it has information about diseases it's involved in, so it's in an anemia of course, it contains uh, sickle cell anemia, it has also involved diseases, it has the, it contains some different um, Organic specific databases and entries and chemical databases. There are variations of uh, processing afterwards. You have cleaved in different sites. There are amin some amino acids are modified, so not pure amino acids. You have an, some ending translation in some positions. And it's post translation modification of several steps. And you have links to databases. You have links to uh, 
uh, expression studies. You can see how well it's expressed, what the cells it's expressed in. It has a link to interaction, so it's interacting with hemoglobin B, B A, of course. You have a structure database, so you see you have a number of PDB structures here of it, very many, because it was the first, one of the first crystal structures. So it's a lot of it. And you have phylogenomic databases that was contain information. That, that helps you worry, worry what organism comes from, how long it exists, etc. And you have the sequence here, there. so the sequence is there, there. And a lot of references at the end, mm -hmm. variations and references, etc. 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 So a lot of data. So as I said, Uniprot contains basically all protein sequences. And it has been an enormous growth the last decades. So now there are even Swiss prot, it was a kind of steady growth until in the 80s and 90s, at least about 100,000 in the mid 2000s. But then there were some severe jumps and increase of speed because they got a, a, more people who could work on annotation. So now it's more than half a million entries. And you see the trend, the automatic one, is just increasing, increasing. So you were know, already in 2010, it was 10 million, and today it was 70 million entries. And then today, you know, Swiss prot has, as I said, about 700,000. So, they can basically grow very fast. So, and as you already said, the Uniprot entry contains a lot of information about different sequence. So this is also what you will go through and look at later today. The next database is PDB. So PDB is a database of protein structures. So it contains information about the structure. And of course, a protein structure contain, can contain more than one chain. And it also, it depends on the structure quality. It depends on how it was, uh, determined and what methods have been used and the accuracy of the data, etc. So it contains not only the structure information, but also often some data quality information. And often, in most cases, not all, there is a link to a paper of it, because most people saw the structure to write a paper. Uh, so we will work a lot with PDB data files in this course later. But I will just show you a very, very brief uh, uh, overview of the database. So we go to PDB, PDB.org, for instance, the European and, and American version of it. And you can, for instance, search here for, uh, uh, you can download, you can deposit the structure, you can value the structure. So if you instead take the uh, American version, you would you would go there. And we can type the globin here, as we did before. And you find the latest structure of a uh, hemoglobin. It was a cardiac structure, actually, interesting, no? But if you, for instance, start you go the other way around, you find that the first globin structure in PDV was from 1979 by St Steigman and Weber. Or even though it was not a globin, it was a, yeah. So the structure of hemo human is from 1984. Yeah. So if you can click and you can look at it in 3D, you can click it, see if my browser works. If it does, you can see, you can rotate it here. You see the heme group by the nice in the middle, and you see a number of hills around it. So that's what we will continue to look at many times in this course. Uh, so as I said, PDB entries contain all this information. It contains also the experimental information. So here you see this, this example to the right has a there's an X-ray structure with the resolution of 185 angstrom, has an R value, is this agreement between the two experimental data is 0.21, in this case pretty good, and the R3 is 2.27. It also has links to other databases, both sequence databases and other classification databases like Scope and CAT that we will go through later. PFAM is probably the the be best classification of protein families, so, so groups of proteins are together. However, as we will discuss later, these are not really groups of entire proteins, they are groups of protein domains, which could be an entire protein, but it could also be a short part of the domain, because um, proteins are contain multiple domains. So one sort of such case, which is primarily single sequence, uh, single domain proteins is 70 M receptors, so, or 7 transmembrane receptors, the Rhodopsin family. So you see here in uh, PFAM, you have 
Uh, uh, this is PFAM NT001. So let's go to PFAM and have a look at it quickly. So if you go to pfam.xfam.org is called actually. And we go to PF00001. You go to 7CM receptors here. You can see you have a summary that describes it. It's actually a Wikipedia entry that has information about what it does, something like that. It doesn't exist for all families, but for many it does. Okay, we got PFAM, it tells you something about that more. It has links to other databases. And Interpro is a consortium of different pro, 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 family databases that are together. However, PFAM is the, clearly the major provider to Interpro. So you see, you can look at domain organization. So you see that most PFAM, many PFAM has, oh, have, have 28,000 sequences to have this domain, domain. They have something in the beginning, then it's one single 17 receptor. And, but also something uh, child member in the predicted. There are a few that seems to have two, seven that are merged together, six and fifty-one of them, and then there are some that have some other domains also extra, like LR, uh, LR domains, etc. But there are few of these. Most of them have this basic single domain, 17 receptor. Uh, you can see that 17 belongs to a clan, which is this high end family. So you have 17 1, 17 2, 17 3, etc. and other family families. So it's a group of families together that are all related. It's called the GPCR RA clan. You can get alignment, you can get sequences, you can get log that someone describes the sequence here, we'll talk about it later. You can get the uh, species, you can see what families does exist in, so this one is basically only eukaryotes. It's only eukaryotes and they have, you can, but, but it's not in the bacterial viruses. And you can see interactions, it interacts with other families here also. And structures, you have a lot of PDB structures here. Uh, so if you look at the sequence there, you have, yeah. So this exists, so today there are, exist more than 15,000 PFAM families. 16,306 today, well, from June last year. So you can, for instance, look at, um, look at some numbers here. You can see the biggest families that have most entries. Uh, well, there's a number of sequences in them, if you look at that. Mm -hmm. The top 20 here. The biggest one is actually WD40, ABC transporter, that have more than two, no, some, some families have more than 200,000 members of them. And that's more than 20, they have more than 50,000. Some of these families are very, very big. And this is something that we, in bioinformatics, use a lot. So that there are many examples of related sequences, is something that is really important for many bioinformatics applications. So that was protein families. So next we actually have another way of describing protein families is doing it from a structure point of view. We'll also discuss this much later. For instance, one of these databases is called CAF uh, that has divided protein families by the structure similarity. However, uh, so if you go to CAFPD protein, CAFPD as it's called, CAFDB is the info. <coughs> so it has 53 million protein domains that went into 2,737 superfamilies. So it's a bit similar to PFAM, but it only contains the subset of proteins that have a structural member. So it is not as complete. And also the way of classifying it is slightly different. So we will discuss that later. But you, for instance, you can look at uh, uh, you can look at three D structure here. You can find the structure of protein. <coughs> you can look at evolution. how these things are related to each other. So you see here, you have some proteins where some have something extra to write and some do not. Because structure is not always conserved. <coughs> and it has a number now that's a cath B that is automatically updated, so it's actually up to date. And gene 3D contains, uh, well, it contains 308,000 domains and it's only a few hundred, so it has some automatic updates also. The problem with CAF has been that it has been hard to keep it updated. You see, the last version is almost two years old. So there are now alternative versions that are becoming more used. One of my favorite one is ECOD, which is probably the only structural classification database that is uh, uh, up to date with my Nick Christian co workers, and 
It's very similar in NCIDS, and we'll go through this much more in detail in a later part of the course.